morning to everybody. I'm going to open today. We're going to do a little bit of a kind of back and forward uh, as we talk to you today. Um, uh, we might get up and wander about, which uh, hopefully uh, we can we can follow on cameras. We'll, we'll just see uh, how it goes. Uh, I've been working with the college for the, the last couple of years and um, uh, since before COVID. I've done a lot of work with the staff uh, and things in here, but this is the first time I've really had an opportunity to speak to a lot of the students and it's lovely to see you all here. I know some of you are probably thinking, what am I here for? Like, as in, in this room, you know what you're at college for, I hope. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you're probably like, what am I here for? You know, somebody's going like, ah, we're going down into the theatre uh, and you're going to sit there and you're going to listen and you're like, aye, all right then. Uh, uh, yeah, that, was, that definitely happened. Uh, we know that that happened. We could tell as she's walked in, you're like, I have no idea, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Uh, and that generally is actually not a bad place to start, to be honest, because that's probably going to be for many of you like exactly uh, how it's going to run over the next wee while. Can I just check how many of you are here? Because I know it won't be everybody, but how many of you have came to college straight from school? Like you finished school in June, July there uh, and you're straight here uh, from school. Uh, a few. How many of you have had a gap? Uh, in between like uh, school and coming to college? Anybody had a wee gap? And how many of you, this is your second year or you've been here a wee while, this is actually like you've been doing a wee bit. So, okay, so we've got a good mix. Um, some of you guys that are uh, therefore have been here a wee while will recognise what we, Poonam and I are going to start off talking about because what we, we thought was uh, when we started and we spoke to Angela about this uh, is that it just immediately makes you start to reminisce. Poonam and I are sitting watching you guys all get ice cream. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and pizza and laughter yoga. Uh, none of that shit happened uh, when I went to, uh, when I went to college. That just was not how it was uh, at all. Um, I, I don't know if this is true for any of you guys, but I left school. Uh, not uh, this is going to sound a wee bit weirder than it, that it actually should be. But I left school in a bit of a hurry, um, more because of the fact that I had no clue what I wanted to do. Um, I'd always had this thing since second year in school that I wanted to be a chef, but I'd never investigated it. I'd never looked into how to be a chef or what I was meant to do or did I need any qualifications or anything like that. I hadn't looked into any of that. And I actually went back to school to start sixth year. I'd absolutely messed up my fifth year, like really right royally. I'd, I'd ended up sitting four hires out of that. I managed to get one of them. Uh, I managed to get my higher English. I got a C in my higher English. <clears throat> and uh, I, I'm still not quite sure how I did that I, either because uh, I don't know if you, higher English is still kind of the same if any of you did higher English, but it was a, an essay I had to write on a short story uh, and I still remember to this day, it's like lodged in my mind that the short story was called Samfire and it was about this guy leaning over a cliff to try and get this plant out the side and his missus basically walked up and kicked him over it. <laughs> uh, and I still remember all of that, but I sat down from a higher English and I couldn't, there was two characters in this short story, I couldn't remember either of their names. Still can't remember either of their names, but still managed to pass my higher English. But I went back for sixth year because I didn't know what else to do. And then about two days in, uh, my mum comes in and goes, you're starting college, which is still very much like my mother. Uh, that's very much how she still runs. And she was like, you, you're going to start college and you're starting on Monday. And it was like, oh, I'm leaving school and that's me all of a sudden. I was out and I was thrust into this very different world. Um, I do a whole heap of stuff on mental health and especially with young people, maybe depending on what schools you've gone to, maybe even I've been in your school. Uh, some of you might recognise me from doing stuff like that, but the chances are I've not spent much time in Ayrshire, so uh, perhaps not. But um, I, when I um, uh, come into to uh, schools and when I talk about this and I talk to co I talk about college the number of young people who are in schools that turn around and go no no I don't want to do it because it's just like school and as especially the second years and, uh, and further on will know it's actually not like school and that was one of the first things that ever got me I felt like a wee baby uh, all of a sudden in this world because I'm very young uh, can I just check who's our uh, not very young anymore uh, I was at that point um, can I just check who's our February birthdays do you have a February birthday only one, uh, me and you then. Were you the youngest in your year all through school? Were you the oldest in your year all through school? Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, well, that's fine for you then, isn't it? I'm, uh, uh, but I'm February the 27th, so if I was born 48 hours later, I would have been in the next year in school. So when everybody else, for any of you March birthdays that are in here, by the way, like you, when you were going, oh, it's my 16th, when I'd literally turned 15, like two weeks ago, you know, and you're already turning 16. So there was always that feeling of playing catch up. And then all of a sudden I came to college. 
I'd felt this kind of outsider all the way through school. Uh, I, I, I still am this, by the way, but I was even more this uh, at the time. But at that point, uh, I was the big lanky ginger kid with the specs. Uh, so I got really, really tall, super, super skinny, had these big glasses that I thought made me look like John Lennon, but I actually didn't. Uh, I was trying to be super cool. They were really, really big, they were like big goggles. I had a curtains hairdo uh, because it was the 90s. <laughs> uh, and for anybody that's old enough, you'll go at fair dues. Uh, it was the 90s, but I had this big ginger curtains hairdo that I used to split down the middle with a special comb, so it split right down the middle. I'd be anal about that split in my hair. I wanted to be Sean Ryder, a ginger Sean Ryder, right enough. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden, I, I was in college. And the interesting thing for me was after that first couple of weeks, because for the guys that are new to this, the first couple of weeks are going to feel weird. If you went to the primary school and then went to the same high school, like you went to the cluster primary and then went, this might be actually one of the first times since you were in primary one where you've walked into a building and had to walk up to someone and went, hi there, you be my pal. Because <laughs> uh, you don't know anybody. Like yeah. all, Every time you started second year, third year, fourth year, unless you moved to school, like I did a couple of times. Like, but if, if that happens, then you just get into it. But this can be a really, really weird time, this first few weeks of college. The second years, you'll be looking at all the first years going, oh, God, love them, and just taking uh, advantage of the free ice cream and all that. You'll know your way about, but not knowing where classes are, not knowing who people are, not having met the lecturers before. And what this can do is it can have a big impact uh, on your mental health. And what we in Poonam want to talk about today is a bit about that mental health and how you keep yourself, just whether you're first year, second year, wherever you are, how you keep this in the game, because this is the thing that makes a difference. Um, I've got to admit, now, after telling you that very gentle uh, starting <laughs> college story, wait until you hear Poonam's, by the way, sit back, uh, you're in for a belter uh, here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I, I hope you're excited for those of you that are starting. I love that, and I hope I can uh, that excitement stays and all of this. You're not going to get free ice cream uh, again, more than likely, <laughs> until this time next year. Uh, but for me, keep that excitement. But also, well, I'll just let Poonam say our bit. So, uh, God, what would you put me up for? <laughs> um, firstly, a huge, huge congratulations to all of you. Do you know, it's been such a difficult couple of years, so I hope that you can really celebrate what an achievement it is to actually be here today. Now, when I was thinking about what to say, I kind of almost reflected back to when I was at your stage, because what you see right now, as we sit here and give these keynote speeches and you've heard our credentials at the start, it's really wildly different from what it was like when we first started out. Some of you might even be assuming that, God, they've probably got it all figured out. And the reality is that I've never had it figured out, not when I went to school, not when I was at university, not even when I graduated as a doctor. And you'd think that after being a doctor for 16 years and I'm a mum of two young kids, that I'd have, I'd have my shit together. But um, I really don't. <laughs> in fact, every single day my kids are throwing a million problems at me and life does that to you. And I just sometimes think, I wish you knew that mummy really hasn't got a clue about what she's telling you. But I guess, why do I share this? I share this because I think it's easy to always think that everyone's got it together. And, you know, the fact is that life will get overwhelming and as I have only over the last few years learned that this is actually a very normal phenomenon as I've spoken to other very successful people in and around me you know we mentioned at the beginning that I work in telly so I work with some pretty famous people and I've always gone god they've got it all together and it's only when I'm sitting chatting to them behind the scenes that I'm like god you know what we're all making it up as we go along every single day so I hope that if you're sat here maybe thinking god I don't know what the next few weeks months or years is going to look like that's okay now <laughs> I wasn't really going to share my Freshers Week experience because, frankly, it's a really embarrassing memory. <laughs> but since Brian has kick-started us off on this trip down memory lane and uh, circle of trust and all that, I feel that maybe I can just go there. So when I left school, I'd been pretty sheltered. I went to an all-girls school for a start. So when I got to university, the prospect of boys was quite exciting, of working next to boys. Um, I was quite new to the boozy scene. And I did what sort of all students really do, which is just get carried away. You throw yourself in, you want to belong, you want to fit in, you want to make pals. And um, I went a bit wild with it, um, much to the horror of my very traditional Indian mum. So I thought I'd kind of hidden a lot of it from her. 
until I landed up in hospital with a, not proud of this, glandular fever. So for anyone that doesn't know what that is, it's a nasty throat infection. And my mum was like, how did this happen? And, uh, and the doctor was like, well, it's a kissing disease. And my mum's like, oh. And I was like, no, 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 mum, no. You get it from like sipping or sharing cups with other people. Um, I'll never forget just the bawling and screaming in Punjabi that I got in Gartneyville Hospital off of her. And then it turned out that the doctor who was treating me was my supervisor. So um, yeah, it was uh, quite an embarrassing moment. <laughs> But I guess what I'm saying is starting university, I was really overwhelmed. Um, I didn't know what I was doing, felt really out of my depth. I made loads of mistakes. I failed loads of exams because I was just an idiot and was out partying all the time and just was trying to impress all the wrong people. But it was also a time in my life where it was the first experience of anxiety that I ever had. But what I didn't have back then, and now I properly sound like a dinosaur, um, we didn't talk about mental health. Like it just wasn't spoken about. So you just kind of got on with it. But I'm just so pleased that things have changed and it's very different now. No, it is very different. Uh, and it is, I think, uh, when I was in school, I don't know if you were the same. I, I'd never, I, don't, I can't remember ever, ever getting a mental health talk. No, you remember no, never. A mental talk? Um, uh, and, uh, and can I just say, just to clarify something on what Poonam just said, you don't get glandular fever from sipping other people's cups. <laughs> Uh, just to clarify, it is a kissing disease, uh, just to make sure that everybody's clear on that, just in case you go home to your mum if you get glandular fever, uh, and you go, apparently that Dr Poonam off the telly says you get it from sipping other people's cups. Uh, it stays in the room, the uh, conversation. Absolutely, yeah, let's, let's keep that in the room. Um, but let me, let's give you a little bit about mental health, you know, and we tell you these stories not to go, oh, we remember the days, although there is a wee bit of that, and it's nice for us to reminisce. It's just to say that even though the world has moved on, the same problems exist. Uh, some of you will be feeling a bit out of your depth, some of you will be wondering why you're here, some of you will be already wondering, even though it's only day two, have I made the right choice? Is this really what I want to do? And do you know, it, you, you'll find out in the, in the fullness of time, but what we always want to get to you is that there's always choice. But in order to be able to make those choices, you have to get this uh, square and this, this all right. So let me uh, start off uh, talking about mental health by telling you a little bit of like a, a story, if you like. I know it's really a story. I want to make you think. Uh, I want to put you into a situation. Let's imagine that you and I go for a walk, right? We go for a walk outside uh, the, the college, uh, into deepest, darkest Kilmarnock. And uh, <laughs> we walk outside the door and we look above the car park. Where can I just say, just in case it was one of you, somebody's stolen my reserved car parking space. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm totally over it. But I just keep on mentioning it every two minutes. I was quite looking for it. I felt quite posh. I said to Angela last night, oh, how posh. Uh, I've got a reserved space. One of you bastards has nicked it. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> just like, but I found one, you're all right, uh, I'm not in the street, I found one, but anyway, uh, so uh, let me imagine, like, we walk out here, and let's imagine there's a wee group of us, and we walk outside uh, th this place, and uh, there's a beautiful rainbow in the sky, there's this lovely rainbow in the sky, and what happens is, is we all go, ooh, rainbow, uh, as you do, uh, and what happens is, is one of the people in our group turns around and says to everybody else in the group, oh my God, look at that rainbow, isn't God wonderful? Isn't my God, whoever's God or whatever God that is, isn't God incredible that God has given us this incredible, joyous, wondrous, beautiful planet to enjoy while we have our time here on earth before we go on to whatever's next? The person next to them looks at them a bit funny and goes, God? That's nothing to do with God, pal. That's totally physics. Uh, that's just science. That's just a refraction of light through water droplets in the upper atmosphere that causes this kind of funny bow shape. And actually, if you were high enough up, you'd be able to see it actually can form a full circle. And even then, there's even bits of the rainbow that you can't even see uh, because as you sit here just now, your visual spectrum can't get there. We leave them at the end having some argument about God and science. Can I just say that you're also possible to be both? Uh, if you want to be, I'm just using this for the sake of argument. We look at the next person in our group, and the next person in our group is standing there like this. <laughs> and you go, are you all right? Are you okay? And you go, I am fine. I've just been having a really hard time recently. And my gran said from heaven she'd send me rainbows when I hated on. This is my gran talking to me just now. And it's so beautiful because I've had such a hard time and I sort of totally needed it. And you go, all right. <laughs> Neighbor, 
and you just leave them greeting in a corner and, and they're having this big moment about their gran and, and this rainbow. Uh, but you look at it and you look at the rainbow and you go, oh no, yous are all relatively young. I know not everybody is, but we're all relatively young. Uh, so talking to the young people in here, you look <laughs> at the rainbow, inside your head you know that if, it's, if there's a rainbow that means it must have been wet at some point. So inside your head you go, oh crap, my mum asked me to bring the washing in before I went to college. <laughs> And I've totally not done it. It's probably been chucking it down. Oh, no. Uh, Poonam and I take photographs of this rainbow and then we post it on our socials later where you can follow us if you wish at any point. We'll give you our socials later on. Uh, and we post it with a wee thing that says, today was a great day, but just remember, to get the rainbow, you first must have the rain. Oh, Hashtag mental health awareness. And everybody thinks we're super, super deep. Uh, and everybody goes, isn't that magic? Now, here's the point about this, because actually what happened was a rainbow appeared in the sky. But what happened in our wee group was that every single person in our wee group had a different emotional experience about that same thing. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to argue with anybody's emotional experience. If this person finds amazing comfort, and maybe they're right, maybe there is wee grannies up there going like, oh, there's my, look at that, there's wee Amy having a hard day. Do you know what I'm going to do, God? Uh, can, is it all right if I send her a rainbow? Uh, is that all right? I know, I know it's not been raining or anything, but she just needs it. Is that all right? I'm sure that happens. In in heaven, uh, there's probably a, lot of a rainbow ordering service that you can do for your grandkids who've had a hard day. But anyway, I don't want to knock it. Anyway, uh, the, the person who's having that religious experience, the person who's seeing science through it, they're all having a different emotional experience. And the reason is, is because of meaning. And it's the meaning that we put on that rainbow. Why is this important to your mental health? Why am I telling you this sto silly story about uh, a rainbow? Because this is true about everything. What's the meaning that you've put on college? What's the meaning that you're putting on everybody else in this room? At the moment, you can't help but put a, mean a meaning on Poonam and I. And as Poonam already said, you know, you maybe look at us and think, oh, well, they're sitting on this wee stage thing and I've been asked and they've got this keynote thing and Poonam's on the telly. So that means that she must know everything that's going on in the same way as Poonam has when she's gone into the TV studio and met all these people that she knows. Uh, and gets to go to all these swanky parties. Uh, <laughs> and she looks at all these things and she goes, oh, they must have it. And this is happening with everything. If I was to say to you just now, I think this would be a wee bit weird, so just go with it and, and what I mean. <laughs> but if I was to say to you, party at mine uh, tonight, and we're happy, by the way, don't show up. If you can find out where I stay, don't show up. There's not a party at mine. But if I was to say party at mine, or if one of your classmates was to say, by the way, just to celebrate the end of the first week, uh, you know, I, I've got, you know, what we would call an empty, which I think now is a gaff, but we've got this kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to sound as if I'm trying to get down with the kids, so I'm trying to you know, use my terms. <laughs> Uh, and what happens is uh, there's a party at mine and I'm going to invite the whole, the whole of the class and everybody's coming. Mm -hmm. For some of you, the meaning of that would be, yes, I can't wait, I'm going to meet these new people, it's going to be brilliant. But for some of you, the meaning of that would be, what am I going to wear? Am I going to be judged? What are people going to think of me? Uh, I don't drink that much, so are they all going to think I'm weird because I don't drink? Or maybe you're like, oh man, what if I drink too much? And what if that means? And then what if that means they all fall out me because they're all going to see the real me? And when I'm in college, I can protect me so I can put my shield up and I know that I'm going to be all right because my shield's up. But the meaning of that is this. And, and everything is about meaning. Every single thing. And what that means, and this is the really important bit that I want you to get, is that mental health, we talk about as if it's an outside-in thing. You talk about mental health like it happens to us. If any of you, and I'm sure some of you are in a room with this many people in it, there's some of you that know what anxiety feels like, like real proper anxiety. There's some of you maybe that know what it feels like to be depressed. Some of you maybe when you were back in the day uh, have, uh, have done things because of that anxiety and depression that now you're like, and maybe even still you're like, oh God, I wish I could stop doing that, whatever it may be. And these things are true for every single one of you. But we look at the outside world and we go, why am I like that? Some of you will be in this room just now, and I mean, I think there's enough people, that it'll be at least one or two of you, that might actually be sitting in this room at the moment, surrounded by people, and everybody going and talking to you, and when you walk in, but still inside your, in your mind and in your heart feeling lonely. So you feel lonely, even though you're surrounded by people. And then it doesn't make sense, because you're like, but I know I've got my mates, and I know my family are good, and I know this is here, and I know that's there, but... I still feel this thing because something in your head, something in here is putting a meaning on that experience. And what Poonam and I want to really get to you today is, is that when you're wanting to work with mental health, and mental health is something that affects us all, what we need to do is we need to pay attention to that meaning. 
We need to look inside. Mental health is an inside-out thing, not an outside-in thing. That where all the answers to all of your mental health problems, even though you might not be able to know them yet, are all in here, because it's all about the meaning that you're putting on the world. Um, do you agree with that, Poonam? Because you're obviously coming from kind of a medical sort of standpoint, but does that fit? Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with everything. And, and I think that, you know, this concept and idea of perception of how we're perceiving other people's lives to be, like something that, again, when I was at your stage, I didn't really, I didn't have, because social media, for example, didn't really exist. Whereas now, not only have you got all of this kind of going on that Brian's talking about, but you've also got the world of social media to contend with. And I think it's really important that we mention that because although I think it's probably one of the best kind of inventions of modern times, and especially through the pandemic and lockdown, many of you will have connected with each other, perhaps, you know, on social media. It was great for creativity, for learning new skills. Um, I might have learned some dancing and done some dancing on TikTok. Don't go looking for that. But it's, it's a powerful tool. But what I've seen as somebody who uses social media for work as well is that actually it can trigger comparison culture. And what, what happens with that is that it can trigger anxiety, other mental health issues. And I see this all the time as a GP in my clinics. I see it in my own kind of friends and loved ones. And you know what? I actually can get swept away with it as well sometimes as you go down that scroll hole and, and you, you see everyone living their hashtag best life and you think well do you know what they're having they're having a great time and therefore you know I'm having a, a terrible time or all oh, your insecurities seem to come out and you go down this comparison kind of rabbit hole and I think that it's it's really important that I say to you that you need to be very mindful as you enter this next chapter or where of like where you place your attention where you place your energy what you're spending your time doing and what you're allowing to come into into your headspace. So, you know, when you are looking at it, when people are sharing their best bits, I often say that, you know, the in-between bits are the things that we can't share on social media. And the in-between bits is where the ordinary everyday life happens, which has some of the good bits, some not so good bits, but it's the ordinary bits that we'll all have in common. Um, and we forget that when we are scrolling. So I think that be mindful, be careful when you are, like if you're spending time uh, on, on social media or with someone, if you feel really good afterwards, that's a good sign. If you feel drained and negative or sad or less than afterwards, that's a sign that you should stop that. But I think moving forward, definitely um, over the next few years, it's something that you're going to have to take control of, put boundaries inside, online and offline, um, because otherwise it'll very quickly take over. You've seen, have you seen it in, in GP practice? Because I know that I've seen it in mental health, a, a shift since so because we will we, we remember the days before smartphones yes. uh, like in all of those things you guys are I, I don't know if you've ever heard this term before but for the young people in the room you guys are now what's called digitally native um which basically means that you, you just take it for granted that this is what your life is some of you will have been able to use a smartphone by the time you were uh, probably not long after you could walk to be perfectly honest but have you seen a change in in terms of the mental health things you see as a gp yep um since you know, pre-social pre, pre uh, social media becoming something that, you know, because for a long time you weren't, I don't know if you'll remember this, again, you guys probably a wee bit too young, remember when you weren't allowed a Facebook account until you were 13? <laughs> uh, so everybody had dodgy dodgy birthdays in it and all sorts of stuff, so you could get one when you were 11. Uh, now it's just kind of a free-for-all, but have you seen a shift, did you yeah. think? Yeah, I mean, GP it's funny practice? you say that, because I fight with my nine-year-old every day because he wants his TikTok account, and I'm like, yeah. no, you don't, because I do see just how much of an infiltration it has on on your mental space and and i kind of come back to this you know like from the moment you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed you are consuming information whether like, everybody picks up their phone first thing in the morning and we shouldn't do it but we're probably all doing it and as soon as you do that you're getting notifications you're getting texts you're kind of scrolling you're getting news feeds it's constant consumption of information and then throughout the day whether it's a, you know you'll be at college you'll be learning consuming consuming conversations that you're having with people there's like the cost of living crisis there's so much going on in the world at the moment that actually it's at a pace that just didn't happen like 10 years ago mm. so what I'm seeing is I'm seeing younger and younger people coming in feeling very burnt out 
feeling really drained and something that I actually encourage my patients to do I do it myself you know like you'll be doing audits throughout your life you'll be auditing your expenditure how much you're you know, spending your bills your kind of work audits but how often are you actually auditing your own mental health so I have something that I use called a mental health audit and really I would encourage you to do it over a two week period if you can every morning when you get up and put a wee notebook next to your bedside table or do it in the notes on your phone you shouldn't really pick up your phone the first thing in the morning but you could do it in there and you're asking yourself two questions how am I feeling today and what are my energy levels like and if you find that every single day you're seeing a pattern where you're writing words like sad anxious stressed out burnt out, worried, um, no energy, feeling tired all the time. That pattern tells you that something isn't right. And if you leave that for long enough, you will end up coming to see the GP because you're burnt out or needing medication or support. So time is, so if you do that audit over two weeks and you notice there's a wee pattern, that's when you need to be reaching out to somebody you trust, whether that's one of your friends, whether it's your peers, whether it's any of the amazing support system that you've got here at the college, you've got loads of resources here as well, or whether you're talking to your doctor but I do see this massive kind of rise at the moment and it's important that you're aware because when we're aware we can do something about it because prevention is always better than cure. Yeah absolutely and I, I would say for, as a mental health uh, person and somebody who's worked in mental health so I started my mental health journey in 2003 uh, a, a way back and, uh, and it's when I first started doing all this type of stuff it was very much depression was the thing that's what people were coming with they were on antidepressants everybody was feeling really low and as social media became a bigger and bigger thing, or phones became a bigger thing, like, or it had access to technology, it changed into anxiety. And I think what Poonam said is really important if you, about that comparison thing. When you think about that, you know, like you, I know this might sound weird. Is anybody doing psychology? Any psychology students in? Uh, okay, now if you do psychology, if you look into things like um, how things like hypnosis work, and everybody thinks that hypnosis is like, you know, like you riding a chair pretending it's a horse or something like that, and that's what hypnosis is, but actually it's about your mind just being open to suggestion. Mm -hmm. And when you're sitting on your phone, what we call your critical faculty, so that front bit of your head isn't there. It's like switched off, so you're just like, uh, and you just take it in. And you don't realise that it's literally just downloading. You might think that you've just flipped through Insta or your Snap or TikTok, and it's just kind of gone by. And you might even have stopped at a couple of things, but all of that information is downloading. One of the examples I use of this is what I call the best dad in the world example. And by the way, this could be best mum, best sister, best brother. I'm just going to use dad as an example. But when it gets to Father's Day, for instance, or Mother's Day, or whatever it is, or a birthday or something like that. But let's use Father's Day as an example. All of a sudden, when you go on your Insta or whatever it is, and you start scrolling down, all you get is, oh my God, this is the best dad in the world. Uh, I don't know what I'd do without him. Um, uh, happy Father's Day to you, Jimmy, uh, or this sort of stuff. And that's good. But does everybody, really, if I was to do a wee bit of a poll and me and Poonam were to sit here and do a poll, how many of you really have the best dad in the world? Because uh, I know that that's actually my daughter's not, I'm not, I'm not going to go down that line. That's, that's cheesy as hell. Um, what, I, what I mean by that is, like, we, we don't, and, and what we don't do is, like Poonam says, is reading through the in-between bits, being able to see what you see, so or see what you don't see. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in the Best Dad in the World post, the, the wee phrases that I ask people to look out for is, this is the best dad in the world, this is Jimmy, don't know what I'd do without him. Sometimes we have our differences. Now, see that phrase? By the way, sometimes we have our differences. That's a key phrase. I know we don't always see eye to eye. This is another key phrase. This basically means they fight all the time. And now this is a social media post to because they thought, well, it's Father's Day, so I have to put something up for them or they'll go pure mental and go, yeah, why didn't I not get a post for Father's Day and your mother get one for Mother's Day or something like that. So I'm just avoiding the hassle. But what you don't see is you don't see all that. You just take in, everybody's got the best dad in the world. So... Why is mine such a something hole? Oh. Uh, we've sworn already. I probably could have got away with that right enough. But why is mine always horrible to me if that's your experience? And apologies if it is, because I know that that's kind of maybe a bit like, oh, I call that a pokey stick moment. So apologies for that. But it's important. Like, why is everybody else having the best holiday or the best ice cream? Oh, my God, can't believe this ice cream. Best ice cream in the world. No, it wasn't, it. <laughs> uh, no, it was. It was That's a bit half-assed. It, it looked great. Yeah, best ice cream in the world out there is back on soon, according to Angela. 
<laughs> but what we do is, is the meaning of that is, that as Poonam says, the meaning inside our heads, just like the rainbow, is you watch it and you watch it. Everybody's having the best. Everybody's having the best. My ice cream was a little bit like crap. Uh, and that ice cream that I got there looked brilliant. And I went to TGI's and I got a burger and it was all right. Uh, and I went out <laughs> with my pals and I went to a gig. And it was kind of decent and I had a good time, but it wasn't like the best ever gig that they all seem to have. And what happens slowly inside your head is <clears throat> that gulf yeah. starts to create where there's something in between what you think is everybody else's reality and you. And this, from me, my perspective, working with people of your age uh, in therapy and on their mental health is one of the biggest issues at the moment. So I'm just going to reiterate what Poonam says. I think it's so important, and I know that the meaning of this to some of you is, I don't think I can do that, but it's to speak about your mental health. That we learn through two things. Uh, so there's two ways that you've learned to be you as you sit here just now. You've learned through experience. So you've done stuff and you've been out there. But from a very early age, your main way of learning is through role models. And when I say role models, that doesn't mean you have to look out for them. Just models, just people that you go, I can learn from you. You're a mimicking machine. You're a copying machine. That's what you, especially when you're really young. So you've soaked in. I don't know if any of you have had the chance. Some of you should be getting old enough at some point soon to have heard something fly out your mouth which is quickly followed by either a thought or you'll say it out loud going, oh crap, I'm turning into my mum. Uh, or, oh no, I'm turning into my dad. That's the kind of stuff he would say. Uh, that type of thing. Because you're a mimicking machine, so you've soaked it up, good or bad, you've soaked up bits of it. There's bits of it, by the way, just for balance, you'll have pushed away and you'll have gone, I don't want to be anything like that. But this is everybody in your world. So... When you get to like 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, why do you think that that stops? It never stops. What you sometimes need is the person who has the knowledge that experience hasn't given you. Because you've never had the experience of maybe feeling anxious before or feeling depressed or feeling down or what to do when a friend's going through a really tough time or these really funny thoughts you get in your head that you really don't like. You've never had that experience before. And this is where people like Poonam, myself, uh, counselling teams and all of the mental health resources in the college come in. We're not saying that you have to speak about it. I know the meaning, especially, can I just say, and not exclusively, but one of the classic ones, especially for the, the, the guys in here uh, and anybody that identifies as a bloke in here, one of the things that you have all the time is, oh, I, can't, I don't talk about my mental health, man. Uh, no, no. And what happens is when you're with your mates and they go, are you all right? You go, aye, man, I'm fine. Fine, because the meaning of saying something else is, oh, what will they think of me, or will I be judged, or will I be seen as weak, or if I open up, what happens if I open up and I start crying, or something like that. But this is where then the professionals come in. Not asking you just to speak to anybody, but finding the person that knows the knowledge that you don't know. This is why you're at college. You're at college to learn the information that you don't know. So sometimes where mental health, you need to be in a place where you let people help you, because we have the knowledge that you don't have yet. For some of you, just like it did with me, I knew none of this until I was 30. One of the reasons that I love doing this sort of stuff is because I don't want you to have to wait until 30 feeling like shit. When I got to 30 years old, my first thought when I learned all this was why has nobody ever told me it didn't have to be this way? Why did that big lanky ginger kid that left school at 16 still feel like the big lanky ginger kid from school at 30 years old? With two kids, about to get married, all of that. And then for the first time, somebody said, that can change. But what I had to do to get that to happen was I had to go, Bleh. by the way, this is, a, this is a problem or I feel like this. And there are people around you, some of them are even in the room just now, and I know that they'll identify themselves over your time at college uh, who can help. If you don't want to do that, then there's people like myself, there's your GP, uh, there's all these different people that you can speak to. But if you hold it all inside, I promise you don't have the, the, the your brain literally doesn't have the bits it needs. So if you hold it inside, I don't know if you expect to just wake up one morning and go, that's it, I've got all the answers to mental health and I just had to wait long enough for my brain, it, that's not going to happen. But if you go and speak to someone, literally within hours, you can all of a sudden be going, I get it now, I understand. And for some of you, this is a huge change, as I said right at the beginning. Um, and the way to use it and the way to use the people around you is to ask. Not everybody needs to know, you don't have to tell everybody you're doing it. 
Um, but I don't know, Puno, would you what would, what would you say even about going to your GP, going to counselling? Is that are you have good first call? Is that yes, and I, and I do, and I echo everything that you've said there really well, Brian. I think that people often get shy or embarrassed or scared or feel that it's going to be some stigma or judgment if they call up their. GP or speak to someone and say, look, I'm struggling a wee bit. And I hope that today, you know, just even hearing from us, I've struggled with generalised anxiety disorder all my life, but I was only actually, it didn't even take to becoming a doctor. I still didn't kind of think, why would that affect me? It was only after I had my first child that I had my first experience of postnatal depression and suddenly like and it wasn't sudden overnight but you know the signs and symptoms and everything you think as a doctor you'd pick it up straight away but it, it required the support of other people to actually kind of find okay well this is what's going on I need help and it's okay to ask for help and and I know that today we've been saying so much about mental well-being I think just awareness is everything and knowing that you know none of us are immune and it's normal to feel all the feels I mean you might have good days and bad days that's totally normal you might even have your mood fluctuating several times over the course of the day that's totally normal too but it's recognizing that pattern and kind of going well actually there's been more bad days than good this month or maybe doing that wee mental health audit and just saying well do you know what it, it's it doesn't make me weaker to ask for help actually it's the strongest thing that you can do but ultimately this is a really exciting chapter in your life right now and the next few weeks are going to be really exciting too. And as I said, you will feel all the feels. But just go with it. Have loads of fun. Just try not get any nasty infections along the way. <laughs> <laughs> and we've told you how to avoid that. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah. And uh, yeah, just if there's any questions, then please just fire away. Yeah, absolutely. I, and it is, I, I grew up in college. Even though that first wee wobble, I, I, I was I've still not say, growing up. Have you not? No, well, no I think I grew up. I, I learned. I, I learned how to kind of be a little bit more older than I think, and and can't, I felt as if I caught up. Uh, I had a great experience. By the way, I've just, I'm not, I never became a chef. Well, I did very briefly. <laughs> I did very very briefly, uh, and then worked out very quickly that I hated it. Uh, and it was <laughs> there you rubbish. go. Uh, but this was maybe uh, always always my calling, uh, and always out there. Um, I know that we've kind of ran over a bit. If I can just add one thing in, just because I, I just saw it in my notes there, I think it's a really important thing. Some of you, just when we talk about talking to people, see when you've talked to one person, that doesn't mean you've talked to everybody. This is just like everything else. Um, so make sure that if you've talked to one person, if it doesn't work, then that doesn't mean that you stop because that means that nobody can help you. You're always helpable. And as, as Poonam said, I'm just going to echo that. I hope you have a, a wonderful time in college. Make sure that you absolutely gub that free ice cream stall <laughs> uh, for everything. I came in at the door, Angela, and I walked in and I went, my God, it's mobbed. I was like, there's big queues. And I thought maybe that's for me and Poonam. And then I saw uh, the ice cream <laughs> stall. Uh, and I went, obviously not. Uh, if you want to follow Poonam on uh, our socials, your socials are? Uh, I don't know if I want any of them to follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you were the one that talked about it. You snogged tons of boys in your vessels, week. Uh, Dr. Poonam Christian. Uh, excellent. And you can find us at, at Headstrong Minds uh, on Insta uh, as well if you want. We're, we're really, are you got TikTok? You're so down with the kids, man. Uh, like, I, I don't have a TikTok. Don't go looking, uh, don't go looking for mine. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to meet you. Uh, I don't think Poonam and I are in a mad rush uh, to leave. So if anybody does have any questions, I know some of you have got places to go. We've overran a little bit. But if anybody does have any questions, we'll hang about. We'll more than happily answer them for you. Have a great next little while, however long you're in college. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.